Today we are going to talk about lymphangioma. A lymphangioma is a rare hematomatous congenital malformation of the lymphatic system that involves a skin and subcutaneous tissue. So it is not a it's not a true tumor. It is a vascular malformation which occurs during embryonic development. It can occur as part of syndromes like the Noonan syndrome, Down syndrome or Turner syndrome. The term lymphangiectasia or acquired lymphangioma must also be described here. It denotes a dilated lymphatic channel of a previously normal lymphatic that might have become obstructed by an external cause. So such acquired lymphangiomas may result following trauma, surgery, lymph uh, inflammation, uh, malignancy, radiation therapy or lymphatic obstruction. A few words about the pathophysiology of congenital lymphangioma. There is usually a collection of lymphatic cisterns in the deep subcutaneous plane. These cisterns are separated from the normal network of lymph vessels but they are still communicating with the superficial lymph vesicles through vertical dilated lymph channels. These cisterns may arise from a primitive lymph sac that failed to connect with the rest of the lymphatic system during the embryonic period. Now, the congenital lymphangiomas may be classified into three types. The lymphangioma circumscriptum, cavernous lymphangioma, and the third one, cystic hygroma. Lymphangioma circumscriptum is also known as the simple lymphangioma or the capillary lymphangioma. It is a form of cutaneous lymphangioma. It is characterized by persistent multiple clusters of small translucent vesicles that usually contain the clear lymph fluid. You can see the picture here. These vesicles represent the capillary sized dilated lymphatic channels that cause the papillary dermis to expand. Common sites are the shoulder, the thigh, the trunk, the axilla and the oral cavity, especially the tongue. The second variant is the cavernous lymphangioma. It usually arises during infancy, that is the first year of life. The lesions are situated in the dermis and presents as a painless nodule or a thickening of the skin or mucosa and subcutaneous tissue. The nodules are large irregular dilated lymphatic channels in the reticular dermis and subcutaneous tissue. They are lined by a single layer of endothelial cells. The common sites for a cavernous lymphangioma are the face, mouth, lips and tongue. The third variant is the most common form of the lymphangioma known as a cystic hygroma. It appears early in life and presents as a large soft tissue mass. In 75% cases, it appears in the neck, in 20% in the axilla, and then the remainder are in the groin and other sites. The typical lesion is a multilocular cyst filled with clear or lymph or yellow colored lymph fluid. These lesions are deeply seated in areas of loose connective tissue or loose areolar tissue. They are also lined by a single layer of endothelium with the connective tissue stroma. This picture here, you can see the size of the cystic hygroma. Now, another way of classification is based on the size of the cystic component. So, we have the macrocystic lymphatic malformation. It contains cystic spaces of size more than 2 cm. We have the microcystic lymphatic malformation with cystic space of size less than 2 cm. And then you have the mixed type which has composed of both types of cysts. 
Now, regarding the clinical presentation of the three variants and the uh, acquired three variants, so lymphangioma circumscriptum or simple lymphangioma, it presents a small number of vesicles, size is around less than 4 millimeters, and they are seen on the skin at birth or shortly after. They increase in number with time and the area of the skin involved also increases. They are usually asymptomatic, but there can be episodes of spontaneous bleeding or copious drainage of fluid from the ruptured vesicles. Regarding the cavernous lymphangioma, they may present as a solitary rubbery nodule with no overlying skin changes in areas like the face, trunk or extremity. So they are subcutaneous nodules with a rubbery consistency and it depends on the size of the lesion. So they can grow up to sizes that involve the entire limb as well. But they are usually in sizes around 1 cm or more. The third variant is the cystic hygroma. It presents soon after birth as a deep subcutaneous cystic swelling, usually in the base of the neck or the axilla or the groin. The lesion grows and increases to a large size. They are large cystic lesions which are soft, fluctuant, brilliantly translucent and they have a fluid thrill. These are the characteristic features of a cystic hygroma. Now the fourth variant or the acquired variant that is the lymphangiectasia or acquired lymphangioma, they are actually superficial lymphatic ectasis. It arises in adults and they are most often seen in the axilla, inguinal and genital area. There may be coexisting lymphedema. There may be symptoms like pruritus, pain, burning, and they may have a cosmetic concern due to the presence of the lesion. So some of the common differential diagnosis. The smaller lesions have to be differentiated from warts or metastatic carcinoma of the skin. Then here I am mentioning lymphangiectasia as a separate thing as it has to be differentiated from the congenital variety. Small lesions like herpes simplex and herpes zoster also have to be ruled out. Now, investigations in, as they are congenital lesions, when detected during an antenatal uh, ultrasound, uh, we can go ahead with the amniocentesis to rule out chromosomal abnormalities. If seen after birth, especially in the case of cystic hygroma, Due to the large size, there can be compression to the adjacent structures like the trachea. So you can do an X-ray neck to assess the narrowing of the airway. An ultrasound of the lesion can be done. CT or MRI also can be done for further evaluation of, of the lesion depending on the site and size of the lesion. The treatment, surgical excision is the preferred treatment. However, now there are many schools, uh, many hospitals which uh, attempt sclerotherapy or minimally invasive uh, in, in, uh, procedures like injection sclerotherapy where you can use sodium tetracycline sulfate or doxycycline or ethanol. Alternative therapies include derma abrasion, radiofrequency ablation. Drugs like serolimus have, have also been used to treat lymphangiomas. So I have briefly described uh, what are lymphangiomas and the different types of lymphangiomas and stressed on the clinical presentation of the different types and a few words regarding the management of lymphangioma. Thank you.